Well, I'm Chris, and this is my how to wire up a relay in real life video. So today's project is we got those KC long range lights that we need to permanently wire into this Jeep. We're going to be using a four pin relay. You can get these for eight, nine dollars at the auto parts store. Just walk in there and get one. So if you're going to be wiring a bunch of accessories, notice we only have the winch cables connected to the battery terminals. Go watch my auxiliary fuse box video. This is what we're going to be wiring off of. So it gives us four circuits. So we're going to be using one of these to power our long range lights. Now wiring up a relay like this can be used for anything. It can be used for cooling fans, air horns, lights, light bars, whatever you want. So first we're gonna wire it all up with all the wires hanging out right here so you can see everything and where it goes 100%. And then I'm gonna button it all up and we're gonna look at the final project. So whenever you're running stuff, you need to find an official ground. That means a real ground that whenever you're doing maintenance on the vehicle, you know that once a year, twice a year, you're gonna take this off, clean it, make sure it works, and then you're gonna run all the components that need a ground or require a ground to the same place. So that's the control box for the winch. Grounds right there. This is our official ground point we're gonna use. We're also gonna ground both lights right there. Okay, so I just uploaded a video cleaning these up and going through them. In that video, we also upgraded the wires in case we wanna go crazy with the bulb one day. So installation only takes a few minutes and they look fancy. All right, so you see we got the wires from both of them. The first thing to do is to establish our official ground. We're gonna clean that up and get it ready. So it's in a thick part of the bumper, so we're just gonna clean this up. This is a good ground right here. We're just gonna kind of clean it up a little bit. The bumper's got some heavy duty paint on them. We are gonna restore them, but dang. Okay, clean this up. So if you can, try to use some of this so it makes a really, really good connection. We're going to use both of these. Okay, so we're going to run them both into this connector. Should be fine for the demo. So it's very important to have a 100% official ground like that. We may change this. We'll look at it in the end. But right now, this is just so you can see how it's wired. So we're about to wire the load on the relay. So you have to connect this negative battery cable no matter what. Okay, so whatever you're using, you got to figure out how many amps they're pulling. These are pulling 9.2 or 3 amps a piece, so we're going to run 25 amp fuse. So we got both red power wires from the lights straight together in this terminal. We're going to connect this to 87. So 87, just like that. Now we're going to wire power into 30. Now I want to encourage everybody, go watch that video, learn how to run auxiliary fuse boxes like this so that you don't have a whole bunch of wires coming over to this thing. I'm against that 100%. It's okay for some things, a car amp, we've all done it. So then we're getting power from this. Got our 25 amp fuse. We're gonna wire from this over here to 30. That's our incoming power to the relay. Okay, so this is a 10 gauge wire and this one is gonna be permanent on the Jeep. Okay, and I do recommend taking that yellow off crimping them and then put in the heat shrink, but kind of in a hurry right now. So blue C systems, high quality stuff, 100%. Get that in there. So power into 30, let's get it connected. So we now have the load circuit of the relay wired 100%, ready to go. Now we wire the switch side. In this case, we can use 22 gauge. It's a real cheap wire, you can get it anywhere. I think this was like under $10 for 100 feet. So in this video, we're gonna wire up the switch circuit of the relay two different ways. One, we're gonna get power from the fog lights on the dash switch, so that way we're gonna get power from up here so we don't have to run a bunch of wires back to the dash. Okay, so if you are gonna to go to the dash with a toggle switch, it is recommended you get one with the lights so that you know these things are on. But when you wire a switch up like this, you're gonna have more wires going into the dash. So then another benefit of running one of these we're going to use this for a circuit going back to the dash so that we have a hot wire all the time. So it took me like 30 minutes to fish this through the firewall, but there is a factory hole on there. And this is number 12 stranded wire. We're going to run to this number one circuit. In case we want to run toggles to other relays, we can run whatever we need off of it. So if you're going to run a toggle switch in the dash, you're going to have to have a wire coming back. So we got this two strand 22 gauge hobby wire. We're going to run one piece. So in the future, if we ever want to add another toggle switch, we'll have another wire that we can come back to this section to wire relay, so don't pull it apart. Just run one piece if you're gonna get the wire like I got. Okay, so I gotta fish this through the dash. Okay, so we got our 12 gauge wire, two strands of 22 gauge hobby wire. 
ran through the dash. So we got this coming back in the dash. Don't ask me questions. If you're new to wiring, just wire something just like this. Have it ready for the future. Make everything easier. So the thin wire is for the switch, but let's go ahead and wire that circuit just so you can see it done. We're wiring this up because I'm not going to encourage you to splice into the cigarette lighter or radio wires to get power for your relays. So we're going to go ahead and run a 15 amp fuse. Now we got a hot wire to run whatever we want off in the dash. So 86 is going to be power from the switch and then 85 is grounded. We can go ahead and run both of these wires and ground it in the dash. That's what we're going to do in this situation. It's going to twist the wires around the relay. This is not the official setup. Mine are going to be powered from the fog lights, which we're going to do next. So the switches with lights on them, they are such a pain to run, but the fog lights, you really do want to run one. So let's get it wired up. Okay, so the top is ground, load, and supply. So the supply is going to be from that first circuit that we ran. Supply down here. So since both of these wires are ran to the relay, we're going to have to get a grounding point somewhere under here on the dash. So we got to run another wire to a ground. So we just have it grounded right there to the body. So we're going to go ahead and hook the negative side of the battery up. We got fuses on it, so we should be good. So we're about to test it out. This is just so you can clearly see where all the wires go and there is no confusion. Okay, that's straight off the battery. We're going to screw it down right there in a little bit. So it can become a headache when you try to wire this little toggle in there. That's why we're going to wire them to the fog lights. So when we hit this switch that if we were going to mount it on this dash, we would put in a little designated area right there. So hit the switch. Something's on. Let's see if it's working. So they're working fine. Let's wait till it gets dark and we'll start the Jeep and see if they get brighter and what they really look like. Now I'm going to go ahead and wire it all up like it's going to be permanently. We're going to drill these into there, run the wires down through there. And these are also going to come on with the fog lights, which I'm going to get power from down here. So now the ground wires come out from behind the control box. So I just wanted to show making an official ground. We got both grounds for both lights with the heat shrink. This is the winch control box ground, then the two headlight grounds, the same place, right here. Okay, I would like to hide those, but they really do need to be out in the open so you can check them and clean them. So these are the wires to the original fog lights. Remember, we need a hot and a ground. So this one turns on with the dash on the switch, and we need to make sure that this one is grounded. So on our meter, we go to the diode right there for continuity. Okay, we're going to touch it to the bumper. So we know that that's a ground right here. We've already checked the hot right here. The switch circuit of the relay, we just use a little tiny wire. So we're gonna connect straight from there and run those straight to the relay to 86 and 85. So you can solder the wires if you want. I'm just gonna use connectors and some heat shrink. And now we run this to the relay. So we got power from the battery. There's our 25 amp fuse. This is our power supply to the relay going to 30. 30 is right there. Okay, so these are the two power wires to the lights. One connector to 87. 87 is right there. This is the power from the factory fog light wire and the ground for the factory fog lights. So the black ground wires on 85. the power wire from the fog light switch to 86 there you go we can screw it down now wired up 100% ready to go so you see how I ran the two conduits into the control box of the winch so the ground winch is bad I have to replace it I'll probably wrap them in that plastic stuff but you can see the two power wires come into the control box and they come out that piece of black plastic conduit and it just runs along the winch cables it comes out right here now everything's ready to go we can hook the negative battery cable back up so i like them but a lot of people think that these are emojis So let's wait for the sun to go down and test these lights out. So we're about 20 feet from it. Those are the normal low beam headlights. Let's look at the high beam headlights first. Okay, so just regular low beams, high beams, and then that's regular high beams. Now there's a KC highlighter cover, the little smiley face. 
right there to the left of the shadow of the Camaro on that white fence. With the normal high beams, you kind of get the idea. Now, let's put the long range lights and see if it makes a difference. So headlights off. It's a freaking world of difference. So that fence is 99 feet. I could back up a foot and it'd be 100, but that is a long distance for those lights to light that fence up like that. So let's go look at them from the front. So we were working on something. We could use those lights 100 feet away. Stuck in that pile. Okay, just want you to really see the point of wiring a relay and using it correctly because we got full power at those lights. Those things are freaking bright and those are old halogen H3 bulbs. So to be honest with you, they do not need to be upgraded. They are perfectly fine. So if you want some affordable lights, 169 with the DIY wiring and for 189 I believe they come with the relay the little plug-and-play kit so either way I'm 100% satisfied no need to upgrade these they look fine well that's it for the video if you enjoyed please like and subscribe thanks for watching